All right, you have a paper that looks like this. This is how we're going to fold it. We're going to put it to where the fish tank is on the left and this is on the right. We're gonna go right above this tool. We're gonna to go to the corner by the microscope and we're going to fold down the middle. What I would do is I would fold it first, fold it first. And then I would fold it down the middle and then fold it down the middle, kind of like an airplane. So now you have these two up, okay? And then you're gonna fold it in half. We know the process of how a scientist tests their observations and hypothesis, but what are the tools that they use to do that? We know they could do it in a lab, but what is in the lab for them to use? This lesson, we're going to go over the different tools that a scientist could use. Scientists use tools to conduct investigations. It doesn't have to be an experiment. Now remember, there are three types of investigations. We have the experiment, we have the model, and we have an observation. So you could use these in all of those. So an investigation, a tool is an object that helps you do work and it has a specific purpose. Measurement is the process of using tools to observe an object's properties like mass, volume, temperature, it could be length, weight, things like that. So that is the purpose of tools. And once we're done with this, I'm gonna show you how to fold it. All right, so we're going to open it up and do a graduated cylinder. A graduated cylinder, I actually have one right here. This is a graduated cylinder. It is a tube that you put water in or a liquid in, and it is used to measure the volume of liquids. Volume is how much space the liquid takes up. So I would take this and I would fill it up with water and I would measure it. If it went up to the 85, then it would mean that it was 85 milliliters. So you pour the water in and you measure it. Oops, chewing that by accident. Now a ruler or a meter stick like this right here, or a meter stick is the very long one. A ruler or meter stick measures length in centimeters. Liquids would be milliliters or liters. That is our metric system. So we don't use ounces. We don't use inches. We use centimeters, <clears throat> which is where this says millimeters. Millimeter is each of the lines. All right, so the next thing is a microscope. A microscope is an instrument that uses a lens to make tiny things look larger. This is a microscope, let me zoom out. The microscope has different lenses here and you can turn it. You look down in here you would put a slide and there is actually a light that can turn on underneath for this one. I slide a slide under here. The light shines through the bottom. You can see right there and it lights up. Yep, there's the hole and it lights up the slide so you could see it. So you look through here, there's not a slide so you wouldn't really be able to see it. And then we can adjust it, see, make it closer in so it and we can turn to make it even more 
magnified or we can make it less magnified, which means smaller and larger. So that's microscope. This is a spring scale. I do not have one of those, but it's basically a tube like this that you hold at this part and you hook something on the bottom and it measures how much force is pulling down and you measure it in newtons. Newtons is you have one newton, that's your force. Here we have an aquarium. It is wet, full of water. And then sometimes scientists have a terrarium which is a moist environment, but not wet. They use that sometimes to put some live animals in there to observe them. The next thing we have is a cylinder shaped glass container, kind of like a measuring cup, but it measures how much you need. And it's also used to mix or heat up liquids. It's made out of glass, so you can put it on a burner and it won't melt. So a lot of times in chemistry, they use that. A pan balance helps you measure weight against something else. So you put something in each and you see which one's heavier or has more mass. Now the triple beam balance helps you measure mass as well. You put your item in the container and it'll measure the mass. Thermometer measures hot or cold and we do not use Fahrenheit, we use Celsius in science. We have a compass that measures direction, north, south, east, and west. And this is a test tube, something that you would put something that you're testing into, and it's made out of glass. Some are made out of plastic. This is one of the thermometers. Most thermometers have Fahrenheit and Celsius, but I'm going to actually zoom in here and show you if I can. 20 degrees below zero Celsius is 30 degrees below zero. I mean, in Fahrenheit is 30 degrees below zero in Celsius. It's different. So if I had 32 degrees Celsius is freezing, but it's zero for Celsius. So most of the people in the world use the metric system, which would be Celsius, centimeters, meters, grams, liters, all of those they would use across the world. So if somebody across the world is trying to redo someone's experiment step by step, then they have to have a way to measure it that they have in common. So that is why we use the metric system. Science experiments should be able to be repeated over and over again by someone else. That's how good the directions need to be very, very detailed. And I did not put this one. This one bends light rays. It's called a prism. So those are our tools and you will learn more about them in your reading and digital lesson.